When it comes to learning more about our universe and trying to understand our place in it, there are quite a lot of methods modern scientists use to study all of this. But even with modern techniques and modern telescopes, it's still sometimes extremely difficult to see certain parts of the distant universe, making some questions in regards to the origins of the universe still unanswerable. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about this new proposition of a relatively interesting and somewhat original technique that might allow us to see even further deep into the universe itself, potentially helping us discover things and phenomena we never thought possible. But in this case, we're not talking about some new telescope or some new observation using, for example, some new extremely powerful radio telescope network. We're talking about a technique that was officially confirmed back in 2015 the technique originally proposed by Einstein. The technique involving detecting various types of gravitational waves. Now, interestingly enough, when Einstein originally proposed the idea in the beginning of the 20th century, he also kind of assumed that we'll never be able to find them. As a matter of fact, he never thought it would be possible. But fast forward to 2015, and the scientists were able to officially confirm this using the extremely complex network known as LIGO the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory that allowed us to see relatively minute but also relatively powerful oscillations in the space-time itself. Something that I'm sure would blow Einstein's mind. But because just like light, gravitational waves come in different frequencies and are also created by different events, specifically catastrophic events or extremely powerful events, at least in theory by observing different frequencies of gravitational waves, it sort of becomes possible to see things we would never be able to see before, with some of the lowest frequencies even potentially allowing us to see the early universe, the universe we've never been able to see with anything else before. And so why haven't we done it yet? Well, it's important to understand that at the moment we're only able to detect an extremely narrow frequency of gravitational waves. With the most prolific detector, the LIGO detector, only being able to detect frequencies between about 10 Hz and 10 kHz, with most frequencies being somewhere in between that. And that's of course why to date all of the detections coming from LIGO have been of relatively small in terms of mass black holes, various types of neutron stars, black hole neutron stars, but nothing above a certain mass or below a certain mass, because this is essentially the only frequencies we can currently detect. And a quick side note, all of this could have actually been done a few decades earlier, back in the 90s. There's actually at least one paper that explores the so-called Eurograph that could have done these observations using a European collaboration that unfortunately did not succeed in producing a facility that would be able to detect any of this. And so the fact that LIGO even exists to some extent is a bit of a miracle. There's actually quite an interesting story behind the scientists responsible for making it happen something we might explore in some of the future videos. But because of LIGO's success, there have now been propositions for other types of detectors to help us detect other frequencies that can help us explore the universe in, for example, lower frequencies of objects that are even more massive. And one of the most impressive such propositions that's still in planning and might only launch in 2037 is an interferometer known as LISA. In this case, it would be actually orbiting around the Sun. But because of its extremely large separation, it would allow us to see much lower frequencies from potentially extremely massive and very catastrophic events, including things like massive black holes colliding, events that are reshaping various galaxies, and potentially a lot of other phenomena we can't even imagine. And so if we were to put this on a graph, if LIGO is responsible for lower frequencies, LISA would be able to detect a lot of really, really massive collisions with black holes of millions of masses of the Sun, which obviously we currently cannot really do. But on top of this, there's at least one other collaboration using an entirely different technique known as the Pulsar Timing Array that can also in theory detect even longer wavelengths, in this case covering objects that are billions or even trillions masses of the Sun. And these types of pulsar timing arrays rely on various detections coming from various pulsars detected in our galaxy. And by observing minute differences in these pulsations, it becomes possible to measure extremely long wavelengths of gravitational waves. There's actually a much better explanation in one of the previous videos, somewhere right there, or in the description below. And so in essence, this is a very unique technique that already potentially discovered something unusual about the universe. 
Check out that video from before if you'd like to learn more. But even if Lisa becomes operational and if we improve LIGO, there are still some frequencies we're not actually able to see, with certain gaps visible in the graph. And so at least one recent study made a very unique proposition in how we can actually use something that's already functional and operational on planet Earth to maybe detect some other frequencies using gravitational waves. And in this case, we're talking about microhertz, with one microhertz representing one millionth of a hertz, or a wavelength that lasts in days. And today it's believed that various microhertz fluctuations in gravitational waves could help us see into the extremely early universe, helping us uncover some of the secrets of the first million years in the existence of the universe and helping us discover what the universe was doing at that time. And to detect these frequencies, the scientists propose using our moon. And more specifically, the observations of the changes of the orbit of the moon. Now, naturally, you know that the moon's orbit around planet Earth takes roughly around 28 days. And in the last few decades, the scientists have been able to extremely accurately calculate the orbital position of the moon around planet Earth, with an error of just about one centimeter. And all of this thanks to what you see right here, the so-called laser reflecting panels deployed by various Apollo missions during the 70s. Here's actually an iconic picture from NASA of Edwin E. Aldrin Jr. deploying two of these modules back in 1969. And there are quite a lot of these retro reflectors left by both NASA and the Soviet Luna Hot missions, which today can be used to reflect lasers and calculate the distance to the moon with extreme precision something that the scientists have been doing for several decades. But, as you can imagine, once some kind of a large gravitational wave passes between Earth and the Moon, it can, in theory, become possible to see these minute deviations in the orbit. And by collecting just enough orbital data from the Moon, it becomes possible to see these microhertz frequencies of gravitational waves. And since the orbit here is 28 days, if you were to convert this to Hertz, it would represent a frequency of approximately 4 microhertz located right in that gap that we currently are unable to see. And assuming that this technique works, the scientists in this case proposed that we could maybe also use some other binary systems, for example pulsar binaries, where the stars or pulsars orbit slow enough for us to be able to measure the actual orbits extremely precisely. And by finding something that has orbit of a few days or a few months, and by then measuring various discrepancy in these orbits, it becomes possible, at least in theory, to detect these relatively rare gravitational waves coming from the early universe. And so until future observatories such as LISA that will probably take at least 15 more years to construct, using our moon and the detectors on the moon could actually be extremely useful for potential detection of new waves. But more importantly, by placing even more of these detectors and by using some new extremely accurate atomic clocks to calculate how long it takes for the lasers to reach the moon and to come back, the scientists might be able to reduce the error of their observations quite dramatically, allowing them to detect a lot of different types of waves and disturbances across the universe. But I guess now someone has to go and try this. At the moment this is still just a theoretical paper, but the proposition itself is definitely quite brilliant. So once someone tries this and potentially discovers a completely new frequency we've never seen before from some unknown cataclysmic event that happened billions and billions of years ago, we're not really going to know anything else about this. On that note, check out all the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.